Unless you've been hiding under a rock or don't care, you've probably heard that Specialized have a new road bike to show off. And well, I've got my hands on it, again. This video isn't about whether the new Tarmac SLA is any good or not. You can check out our first ride impressions video for that instead. Here's eight things that I've learned from pestering the engineers and PR team up in Scotland. Ever wondered why there's three bottle cage mounts here? Where the DI2 battery lives now that it doesn't fit in the seat post? Or what size tires are fastest? Well, here's your questions answered. Number one, something that you won't see in the press release is that this top of the range FAC 12R S-Works frame, there's over 500 pieces of individual carbon fiber. Basically, Specialized knew what shape frame they wanted a while ago and then tried loads and loads and loads of different carbon fiber layups until they got the desired stiffness, compliance and weight that they were targeting. The UCI is quite strict about the external shape of a frame, but there's very few rules on what a bike can be made out of and how it's laid up. So this is an obvious area to gain an advantage over rivals. Luckily, there's a very powerful computer that does a lot of this simulating, moving around the more than 500 sections of carbon until after over 50 attempts, they arrived at this final layup with the desired frame characteristics. Just take this bottom bracket area. It is miraculous that it is as stiff as it is with so little material. Oh, and then each size frame has to be designed to have the same stiffness and compliance just to add to the workload, because a longer tube is obviously going to flex more than a shorter one. Speaking of frame material, and the first thing that popped into my head when I heard how minuscule the frame weight is, was impact strength. The Tarmac S8 is a race bike, and in races and of course more relaxed rides too, accidents are just part of riding. The last thing that you want is for your 4.5k frame to be written off, but the specialized engineers assure me that they've done both their homework and testing and the SL8 is more resilient than the Athos and only very marginally less robust than the SL7. Something that isn't immediately noticeable when looking at the frame is that the rear mech hanger, despite being the same shape, is in fact a little bit lighter. No, it's not much and no, it probably won't make you any faster, but it is nice to know that every detail has been considered and a few grams is a few grams. Weight weenies will rejoice. Oh, and I also learned that the paint on these S-Works models is done by hand. I believe the red one is the heaviest and it adds around 50 grams to the frame set. The through axles are also lighter than the SL7 ones. They're straight out of the Athos parts bin. This D-shaped seat post is all new for the SL8 and it's a fair bit thinner than the one you'll find on the SL7. Not only is it more aero than the SL7 post, but it's also lighter. And as you'd hope on a super premium bike, these two bolts on the S-Works seat clamp are titanium. This front one has another hidden detail with four holes drilled into the head so that if you can't access it through the hole in the saddle, then you can put a tiny Allen key through to spin the bolt. One of the consequences of having a thinner seat post is that the DI2 battery, if you're running a Shimano group set, no longer fits inside it. Cannondale, for example, have overcome this by using, in effect, a bit of string to help you fish out the bottom bracket area when the time comes. I must admit, I'm quite impressed with this specialized solution where there's a removable plastic mount that holds the battery to the bottom of the seat post to avoid rattling and makes it easier to ac access it if the time ever arises. You've probably all seen by now the new Roval Rapide integrated cockpit that comes as standard on this S-Works SL8. It's this that is responsible for more than half of the aero gains and that's probably why I've seen plenty of people fitting them to their existing bikes, not just SL8s. The bar follows recent trends by going flared, four degrees in fact, so that means that the bar is wider at the drops than it is at the hoods. In comparison, the Rapide non-integrated bar has two degrees of flare. Four degrees is still a lot less than we see some riders opt for. For example, Pogacar on his new NV integrated cockpit clearly has a significant amount more, but you can't buy that one yet. The specialized engineers do, however, tell me that this additional flare is not in any way responsible for the claimed watt savings. So these could be additional aero gains if you do indeed choose to go down a bar size. Remember the 2019 Venge? Well, those with particularly good memories might remember that it had three bottle cage bolts so that you can mount the bottle cage in multiple positions. I asked the SL8 designers why they were back on this new tarmac and the answer is aero. Supposedly, the lower you mount your bottles towards the bottom bracket, the more aero it is. However, some riders, particularly those with shorter arms or less flexibility, might prefer the bottles a bit higher, hence the two bottle positions. Obviously, I wanted to know how many watts I could be potentially chucking away by having my bottles too high, but the specialized engineers said that the difference in their testing was less than a watt. And to take that with a pinch of salt, 
because, uh, well, of, I don't know, errors and margins of error. That's the word they used. Some people might have been surprised that the SL8's clearance remains at 32 mil. That's certainly large enough for most, but smaller than some of the recent aero bikes. For example, the Cervelo S5 has 34 mil of clearance. Specialized says that the choice was informed by their pro riders under the Project Black testing. In the wind tunnel, at least, it's 26 mil rubber that is fastest on the Roval Rapide wheels, although 28 mil tires are only a few watts slower at 45 kph. Most riders on UK roads, I'd argue that the 28s would be the better choice, but it's interesting that Specialized have built in that 6% more rear compliance just so that their pro riders can still go for the marginally quicker 26 mil without feeling beaten up after hours of racing. One of the most circulated pictures of the new tarmac is this one with it covered in green paint. No, it wasn't just the work of a rogue contemporary artist and rather an actual genuine step in the project development. The specialized engineers told me that this Flovis paint was used in the wind tunnel as a visual aid to highlight the leading edges and bits of the bike and components hitting the wind first. This did raise a few questions for me. For example, there's clearly no legs in this picture and it's also clear that the wheels aren't spinning. Both things that are necessary in the real world and have a huge impact on the aerodynamics of a frame. Miles Hubbard, Specialized Product Manager, ensured me that both their wind tunnel testing and extensive CFD analysis use both moving legs and wheels in its simulations to be as realistic as possible. The green paint was a genuine step in the development of the new bike and one that the marketing team clearly, well, they, they really liked it and went to town with. Did any of these facts surprise you? Let us know any interesting snippets of information that you've learned about the new bike down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, then please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time for, well, lots more rides on this.